law of conservation of linear momentum. So this law states that the total momentum of the system is conserved or remains constant when no external forces act on that system. So now the statement is just like this. According to this principle, when the value of external forces acting on a particle or a system is zero, means we are indirectly saying that is no external force is acting on a particle or system. As I have explained earlier, its linear momentum remains conserved. However, you must know that momentum means the mass and velocity product. On the other hand, in the absence of external force, the linear momentum of a particle or a system remains unchanged. This is known as the law of conservation of linear momentum. Now mathematically we can review the law of conservation of linear momentum by saying that whatever external force we apply on the body that is equal to the rate of change of momentum. And rate of change of momentum is given in terms of differential calculus. That is d over dt stands for rate of change. P stands for momentum. So dp over dt stands for rate of change of momentum. Now we we'll say that when no external force is acting, that is f external is zero, then rate of change of momentum will be zero. That is dp over dt will be zero. That is derivative of momentum with respect to time will be zero. And from this context, we say that dp will be zero. That is change in momentum will be zero. So change in momentum is zero and momentum is constant. Now here we are making an assumption that P1, P2, P3 are the linear momentums of the body or the element of system. P1, P2, P3, their sum will be constant. Hence if the external force acting on the system is zero, the resultant momentum remains conserved. So we are saying that external force acting on a system, system of what? System of many particles having momentums P1, P2, P3. So their sum is zero when no external force is acting on the system. Now above equations equivalent to three scalar equations. So we have taken the momentum along x-axis, momentum along y-axis, momentum along z-axis. The sum of P1x, P2x, P3x up to Pnx will be constant. That is along x-axis. Similarly, P1y plus P2y plus P3y, that is sum of the momentum along y-axis, that will also be constant. That is in all the cases, we find that the sum of the momenta will remain constant, assuming no external forces acting on the system of particles. Similarly, P1z, P2z, P3z up to Pnz will be constant. This P1z, etc., this is the momentum of the particles along z axis. Now, we can say that in the absence of external forces, the components of momentum in different directions remain conserved, or the momentum along x axis and z axis remains conserved. The very important note is. As it is mentioned that Px is 0 and Py is 0, we say that depending upon the forces acting on a system, linear momentum might be conserved in one direction, say along x-axis, then along x-axis and y-axis, so Px is 0 and Py is 0. In all directions, that is Px is 0, Py is 0 and Pz is 0. That is, momentum along x-axis, the y-axis and z-axis are zero. If we take the sum px plus py plus pz, the total will become zero. If component of the next net external force on the closed system is zero along one axis, then component of the linear momentum of system along that axis cannot change. Now, there are many examples of the law of conservation of linear momentum. Like one of the example is a bullet fired from gun. So we find that mass of gun with man is m and mass of the bullet is small m. Velocity of gun, obviously capital V. However, it is mentioned V here. So it should be capital V. 
with respect to ground and velocity of bullet being it is very small. So it is small with respect to ground. Now initial momentum of the system that is mass into velocity is the momentum of bullet and capital MV that is mass of mass and velocity product of gun that is that is MV. So initial momentum of system is zero but the final momentum is sum of the two momentums that is momentum of the bullet and the momentum of gun. So zero is equal to MV plus MV and velocity of gun can be calculated by formula minus small m over capital M multiplied by V. The direction of velocity of gun is opposite to that of the velocity of bullet. So the direction of vector V is opposite to that of vector small v. Now we will consider certain examples like one of the example is that rifleman who together with his rifle has a mass of 100 kg. That is rifleman along with rifle has a mass and that is equal to 100 kilograms. Standing on a smooth surface fires one shot horizontally. Bullet has a mass 10 gram and muzzle velocity is 800 meters per second. So what velocity does rifle man acquire end of the shot? So first of all, we will make assumptions that the mass of the bullet and the rifleman are M1 and M2 respectively. That is M1 and M2 are the masses of bullet and the rifleman. V1 and V2 are their respective velocities after the first shot. Initially, the rifleman and bullet are at rest. So net momentum of the system will be zero. Initial momentum is equal to final momentum. That is M1 V1 plus M2 V2. From this equation, we make the subject of equation as V2. That will become M1 V1 over M2. Then the given values are computed in this formula. And then we have to make the calculations. And the value of V2, the calculated value is 0.8 meters per second. Minus sign is indicating the recoil of the gun. The velocity of rifleman is 0 0.08 meters per second and the direction opposite to that of bullet. So bullet is moving forward and rifle is moving backward along with that man. Now when a bullet of mass small m and velocity v pierces, that is penetrates into wooden block, of mass capital M placed on frictionless surface and gets embedded in it. Well, in the whole thing, the most important point to highlight is that the block has mass M and the bullet mass is small m velocity V. When bullet penetrates the block, block will be moving on that surface being it is frictionless. So it is shown in the figure that bullet with mass m and velocity v strikes the block and mvd goes inside and the system including m and small m is moving with velocity capital v as shown in the figure so earlier it was m and small v that is the momentum of bullet and finally it is m plus m moving with velocity v so it is mentioned the block is free to move on frictionless surface. Now both the bullet and block have the same velocity because they are generating one system. Then momentum before collision must be equal to momentum after collision when no external force is acting and this is the statement of the law of conservation of momentum. So in accordance with that we have written the equation. The product of m and v that is small mv and that is equal to small m plus capital M into V. In this, we can make the subject of equation capital V, that is mv over m plus m. Now, initial kinetic energy will be half mv square, that is for bullet, and that is E1. Final kinetic energy is, now the bullet enters the block, so the formula will become half mv square over m plus m and that is final energy. So EF over EI by dividing the two numbers, we get the equation 
m over m plus m and that is less than 1. So, E f will be less than E 1. Some part of energy gets dissipated. Whatever energy gets dissipated, that always comes in the form of heat and that heat is not doing any useful work. So, dissipation means energy loss having no useful work. When the bullet of mass M comes out after penetrating the block of mass capital M, then in that case, MV, that is the momentum of bullet, must be equal to MV plus MV1. We mark it equation number 1. Capital letters are for the gun and small letters are for the bullet. So, loss of energy would be half mv square minus half mv square plus half mv1 square. That is initial energy minus final energy. Now, when bomb bursts sudden, when we say bomb is burst, it means that some fragments are produced. So, there can be two fragments, there can be three fragments, there can be any number of fragments. However, we are considering a case in which there are only two fragments. So, it is mentioned that suppose a bomb initially at rest suddenly burst into two pieces. These two pieces are called the fragments of that bomb and the masses of these two pieces are M1 and M2. And after bursting the bomb, their velocities are V1 and V2. So, mass M1 has velocity V1, mass M2 has velocity V2. Their direction of motion are different. They are the fragments. As there is no external force acting on it, therefore the linear momentum remains conserved. So, we write the equation m1 v1 plus m2 v2 will be 0. And from that we get v1 over v2 is equal to m2 over m1 minus. So, it is velocities are inversely related to the masses and negative sign indicates the direction. Thus, the velocities of the pieces are inversely proportional to their initial masses. Now, the very important note is that if the bomb initially is in motion, then initial momentum will never be zero. Now, if a stationary body breaks due to some interaction in three parts, that is indirectly we are saying that there is a stationary body and due to certain interaction, due to some application of forces, it breaks up into three parts. Then those three parts are called the fragments of that body. They are moving in different directions. Out of which the first two parts move at right angles that is mentioned. So, two parts are at 90 degrees to each other and their momentums are P1 and P2 respectively. Then momentum of third part is to be determined. So, what is the mechanism of determining? So, law of conservation of momentum, we have to take horizontal direction and vertical direction. So, horizontal component will be P3 cos theta that is equal to P1 and the vertical component will be P3 sin theta is equal to P2. So, this is what depicted in figure that for momentum there are two components. One is P3 cos theta along the negative y axis and another one is P3 sin theta along the negative y axis and P3 cos theta is uh, P3 cos theta will be in the negative x axis. So, P3 is a momentum and uh, it is resolved into two components when one component is P3 sin theta and other component is P, P3 cos theta. Now, if we wanted to find the magnitude of P3, we have to just go through with the figure and according to figure, if we use the Pythagoras theorem, then P3 will be calculated as the sum of the squares of the momentums P1 and P2 and taking the square root. And the direction from horizontal, that is 10 theta is to be calculated, which is base over, uh, perpendicular over base. So, perpendicular is P2 base is P1. So, 10 theta will be P2 over P1 and theta will be tangent inverse P2 over P1. Direction of P3 from the direction of motion of first part with reference to first part will be pi plus 10 inverse P2 by 1 and 
from the direction of motion of second part it is inclined at 90 degrees according to the question so it is pi by 2 plus tan inverse p2 over p1 